Hi, this is Jim Clary, and again, welcome to our YouTube video, AirMod Training. In this video, Sarah will first describe the input file, then we'll give you the opportunity to pause your computer while you get to your modeling example directory and get ready to execute it, and then you can follow her along as we go through the execution using that input file. Just one quick reminder, you'll see that the explanation of the input file can get rather detailed. Uh, don't be too concerned about it at this point, because remember, uh, a real advantage of these videos is you can always go back to them for reference as you need to as you work through your actual projects. So I suggest that in this one that you just follow along with Sarah. It'll give you a good broad um, idea of what the input file looks like, but uh, don't be too concerned about sweating all the details at this point. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Sarah. I'm Sarah with AirModTraining.com. I'm going to show you how to set up and run AirPlot in this training video. After you run AirMod, it may be helpful to plot the results. EPA created AirPlot to generate a Google Earth file that contains a contour plot and color-coded receptor locations based on the AirMod output file. Before we run AirPlot, we're going to go over the input file. This is named ex1 underscore airplot.inp. And in the airplot input files, the comment lines start with a semicolon. The first non comment line needs to define the version number. In the first section of the input file, we define the Google Earth general settings. The altitude choice keyword here is used to set an absolute height above or below sea level or you can set this relative to the ground. We chose a receptor height that is relative to the ground. Next, the altitude keyword is used to set the absolute height or the offset elevation. And we want to display the receptors at the ground level, so we set the altitude to zero. Since we used UTM coordinates in our modeling run, we can set the easting and northing keywords to zero and we set the UTM zone keyword to 13. Our facility is in the Northern Hemisphere, so we set the in Northern Hemisphere keyword to true. And now we're ready to define the user plot settings. First, you enter the Google Earth folder title using the name displayed in Google Earth keyword. Our title is set to 24 hour PM 2.5. Then using the plot file name keyword, you specify the AirMod output file that we want to evaluate. So this was the file that we generated when we ran AirMod. And next, using the output file name base, we define the file name base that we want AirPlot to generate. We chose ex1 underscore pm2.5 underscore 24, and AirPlot will append the .kmz extension. Scrolling down a little bit. Using the binning choice keyword, you can set the color scale to either a linear or logarithmic color scale. We picked a linear scale here. And next you define the icon options. The first one is the S icon set choice. We set this to red blue and we set the icon scale to 0.4. We chose the smaller icon size because it makes it a little easier to see the receptors in the inner dense grid. Next, you use the min bin and max min values to set the minimum and maximum values for the color scale. If you set these keywords to data, AirPlot will automatically pick the minimum and maximum values from the AirMod output. The S Disable Earth Browser specifies if you want Google Earth to automatically open when it's finished processing the plot file. When this value is false, the KMZ file will automatically open in Google Earth when AirPlot is finished processing the data. Next, using the Make Contours keyword, you specify whether or not you would like AirPlot to generate contours of the data. We set this value to true. At the bottom of the file, 
we use the number of times to smooth contour surface keyword to specify how many times we want to smooth the contours. Typically this value should be set to 1 because each time the contours are smoothed, the contours are moved further from their proper locations. However, this value may need to be increased if you have a large receptor spacing. Next, we use the number of grid columns and number of grid row keywords to set the number of rows and columns that we want to evaluate. Typically, these values should be set to the default value of 400. However, these values may need to be increased for large receptor networks. And that is the end of the AirPlot input file. Thank you, Sarah, for that excellent explanation of the input files. We're now ready to, for you, to actually run the program. So, put this on pause until you're ready, you've got your computer ready, you've got your modeling um, directory open, and you're ready to follow Sarah along as she walks you through the program execution. I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step commands needed to run AirPlot. Then we will run the batch file. So first, open a command prompt, and we need to copy the input file to airplot.inp, then hit enter. And then you need to type the path to the executable and the executable name, and then hit enter. AirPlot will print the runtime information to the screen, and when it's finished, the file will automatically open in Google Earth. You can see the legend and the color-coded receptor locations and the contours in the initial view. The cool colors represent lower concentrations, and the warmer colors represent larger concentrations. And when you click on a receptor, a screen will pop up with the detailed information about that receptor. Zooming in, you can see that there are two areas that have high concentrations. And for reference purposes only, I'm going to show you the facility layout. So the area to the east of the facility is in complex terrain. So basically, the plumes from the stacks are consistently impacting the terrain at these receptors. And you can see there's another hot spot on the northern side of the facility. This is caused by building downwash. Going back to the command prompt, I'm going to delete airplot.inp to clean up the folder. And if you want to run the batch file, all you need to do is type run airplot.bat and hit enter. And this will run the program and execute the commands we just discussed. So now you are finished plotting the AirMod output concentrations and you've completed the final run in the AirMod modeling system. If you run into a problem with any part of your AirMod modeling project, we offer online AirMod training help that you can purchase from airmodtraining.com. During our session, you'll be able to ask us any question related to your AirMod modeling project. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, AirMod Training, so you'll be notified when we upload any new videos. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.